This tutorial is going to address a question about putting a wine bottle label on a wine bottle. So I'm going to take this from the beginning and then follow it out to the label texture map as well as the alpha map that we will use in uh, Arnold and it also will work in Photoshop if we wanted to. So I'm going to make a simple revolve bottle shape and you can see I have drawn a path here using my CV curve tool and I'm going to use my surface menu and I'm going to choose revolve. I'm going to go to the menu for this and I'm going to set it for polygons but rather than the count of the polygons uh, I'm going to choose control points and it's just going to go and uh, generate some polygon faces to define shapes where the points change angles on our uh, Bezier curve. So I've just gone ahead and clicked on control point and I'll hit apply. And you can see it does a pretty respectable job. The poly count is very low and that's what we really want right now uh, with our uh, Acrobat file. So I've got the bottle I want now and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save this. And what I would do is next is I'm going to right click on my bottle shape. I'm going to choose assign new material. I'm going to click on Arnold and AI standard surface. I'm going to right click and choose material attributes and just as in our ray trace from previous projects in the last semester I can now follow the color node out and put the default checkerboard pattern on this and I can see that it's not really anything I want just yet. So the next step we need to do is go to UVs and choose cylindrical mapping. Now just like our polygon planar surfaces I want these checkerboard boxes to be perfectly square. I'm going to do this by eye. So at the bottom of the virtual texture map tool you'll see that there's a red T. When I click on that I can now go in and grab that scale tool and I can kind of square out this pattern and that looks pretty good. Just a little bit off I think. There we are. And I'm going to go to the UV texture editor now. And in the editor I want this to fit inside that upper right hand corner. So I'll get my scale tool and I'll start to scale this down and I'll drag it into the corner of that checkerboard pattern. Now uh, there's one thing I just want to point out here. You'll notice that when you do a, a simple cylinder evolve uh, you'll notice that these shards kind of shapes over here and those are insignificant because of the bottom of the bottle and it's going to have a color anyway. So if you wanted to, if it bothered you, you could right click, choose UVs, and you could start to grab these and kind of pull them into the upper right hand corner with the rest of the vertices and UV faces. There we go, that should do it. I'm going to return to my object mode and with my object selector and my geometry select my object mode inside the UV editor, I go to polygons, UV snapshot, and I'll direct this to my folder. I'll name this Vino Bottle. Hit save. I'm going to make sure the default 1024 by 1024 is set and PNG. And I'll click OK. And now we're going to go into Photoshop. And now we're going to go into Photoshop. I've opened up the PNG we generated in Maya to create the texture map for the wine bottle. So I'll go to my layer window and I'll add a new layer. I'm going to put a default black background on this for now. And there's our wireframe. Now all I need to do is put the reference in for the label shape. Once again, I'll put another layer in. I'm going to make this white. And I'll go ahead and fill it. Actually, I'm going to put a color in here so we can 
see our alpha channel as well. So I'll make this yellow. And now I'm going to go back into Maya and I'm going to apply this. So I'll save this. And this will be our texture map. I'm going to go to my geometry, right click in Maya, material attributes, and we want to disconnect that uh, default checkerboard pattern we use for our reference here. So I'll right click on the word color in the color node, choose break connection. Now I'll follow that color node back out, click on file, and I'm going to go out and get that newly generated texture map. There we are. And there's our label. Now I'm going to go back in and I'm going to color the bottle uh, the color I'd like it to be. So once again I'll return to Photoshop and I'm going to make the wine bottle color probably a green which is kind of common if it's a bottle of red. So I'll go ahead and make it green. Uh, maybe a little darker. Let's see. There we go. And I'm going to save it. And then I'll jump back into Maya, right click, go back to my material attributes, and I'll click and go back out to my. There we go. I'm going to save that. Now we could just export this as our OBJ to open it up into uh, Photoshop. Uh, if I wanted to, I could probably run a, a smooth function on this if I wanted to bump the polygon count up a little bit. But I'm just going to leave it like this for the benefit of our tutorial. Now with my bottle selected, I'm going to save this as an OBJ. So I'm going to go to File, Export Selection. I'm going to choose the OBJ format. Uh, name it. And now we'll jump back into Photoshop. File open. There's the OBJ. And I'm going to click on open. I'll drop the res down to about 150 on this. And once again, the bottle comes in because there's a sub node which is the AI. Uh, surface, I need to reattach this. So once again, just as in the tutorial of the bird box, I'm going to go to Window, 3D, and I'm going to make sure I've got both the properties and the 3D window available. Now I'm going to click on AI Standard Surface in the 3D window, and when I do, the node texture node in Photoshop shows up. Now the color node is the equivalent of the diffuse with Photoshop. So I'm going to go to this little folder and I'm going to choose load texture and I'll go to the texture that we just generated and then I'll open that and now we've got our bottle. Now if I wanted an alpha channel and this would work when I go back in to do my renders now with Arnold as well I would have to make an alpha channel map which is some equivalent of gray and white. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to duplicate this texture. Click OK. So I'll select the ellipse label shape. Lock the transparency. I'll hit Command Delete to make it solid white. Now I'm going to go down to the green layer. And we're going to swatches and I'm going to get a middle value gray. And I'm going to save it as a JPEG. And I'll just put the word alpha at the end of this. And now I'll hit save and click OK. Now, if I were to go back to the original wine bottle, close this out now. And I'll close this out. And I'm going to go to my 3D and I'm going to make sure that my properties are here as well. And once again, if I go to the standard surface node, in the 3D window, there's my materials again. And you'll see a series of slider bars which allow us to change the nature of the default geometry that we just opened up, and you'll see opacity. 
and much the same as the diffuse if I click on the little folder icon I can load texture and I'm going to go out and get that uh, alpha channel that's the one we want and now I'll click OK and you can see that we've got some transparency there now if I was going to open this uh, in Adobe Acrobat if you recall, we had to make sure that the orientation of the bottle was correct. So once again, I'm going to address the 3D window and, pro and the properties window, and I'm going to choose the revolve surface. This time, the actual geometry. But once the geometry is selected over the properties window, if I click on the little cube, I now get the orientation features of our 3D virtual file. I'm going to click on this little middle hooked arrow and now I'm going to go to 3D, export 3D layer and from the file format I'm going to choose U3D. Leave everything else the default as it is and I'll click OK and I'm going to save it. Now if I were to go into Acrobat I would go to Tools and I'm going to create a new PDF blank page. I'll zoom back. I'll go back to Tools and then I'm going to click on Rich Media. And now the tools for Rich Media appear at the top of the interface above my dock. I'm going to choose Add 3D. I'll drag a random selection box. When I let go it prompts me to choose that U3D and there's my U3D. You can see that there's the bottle, there's the transparency. I'll right click, properties, transparent background, check that off, click OK. Now when I go up and allow Acrobat to interpret this file, you'll see there's the transparency. Now the one downfall to this You'll see that very often the transparency really is not too effective or not perhaps of a quality that you would want. And that's because it's a virtual file and it's been embedded in an Acrobat PDF in a very small, efficient way. And there you have a wine bottle and its label and if you wanted alpha information as well.